Hello, wonderful. This is Sarah, and I'm here with Jennifer Schluter, and she was the former editor of 20 two papers in the LA area and now she does hypnosis and breath work and I think you're in South Africa now is that right Jennifer? Yes I am I'm in Cape Town. Oh well it is good to connect with you from the other side of the world and excited to talk today about our dream partner because no matter where I talk to women from South Africa, Boston, Norway, Hong Kong, we all want that perfect partner for us. So excited to, to talk to you about that. Now, you haven't always had your dream partner, correct? Uh, no, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, then give people a tiny bit of background on where you came from as far as your romantic past. Um, well, okay. So I came from very dating like being in very 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 toxic relationships with people who were alcoholics gang members um people who were lying to me cheating on me like you name it i've probably had it so <laughs> it was a whole four years of that and at some point i decided no more i don't want no more lies no more cheaters no more anybody who's just toxic to me then i manifested for another four years like actually really great men who were like you know, not liars anymore, not cheaters anymore, but they were not available. Sometimes physically not available, sometimes not available emotionally, sometimes both. So that was my brief dating history, so to say. And then um, finally, I manifested my king at the beginning of this year. So I'm really happy about it. <laughs> well, I am excited for you. I, before we get into the really good stuff of manifesting the king, let's address that middle four areas where you had a lot of guys who were not emotionally available. Cause I know I hear that from a lot of women. How did you manage your emotions during that time of kind of like, okay, look, I've done the work. I'm not attracting toxic guys, but this is disappointing as well. How did you manage your emotions then? Absolutely. And so what I learned from my first four years of dating these toxic people, I went back to my childhood in the hypnosis session with my hypnotherapist and then I actually found out, okay, my norm, my comfort zone as a child was being um, in like, just was arguments, drama, chaos. There was absolutely nothing normal around about my parents' relationship. <laughs> so that, but that was my normal still because I didn't know it any other way. And so that had manifested into very chaotic relationships where I was like craving this love. I was craving attention. I was craving love and I was craving the chaos and the drama with it. And then when it came to the next um, part, like the emotionally unavailable people and physically unavailable people, um, I also, after a certain amount of time, I had to look back and I was like, okay, where does this come from? And this actually came also from my childhood, of course. Um, and I'm a true believer of everything that we have stored in our subconscious minds from our childhood is affecting us right now. And if we don't look at it, we're never going to solve it. So I looked at it and- if we don't look at it, we're, we're never going to solve it. I, I want to make sure everyone heard that statement because sometimes I'll, after a toxic relationship, someone will say, I'll say, what's your healing strategy? And they said, well, I'm joining dating apps. And it's like, that that's not a healing strategy. That's, you know, that's a very dangerous. Cover up. That's a bandaid. That's a cover up. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so for the emotionally unavailable, it was also because during my childhood, I could not understand my parents' love language. They did love me, but I was not able to understand it because, for example, my mom, she used to give me things. That was her love language. That is not my love language at all. My love language is spending quality time together. So I didn't understand, you know, her love. And same with my dad. And then also um, there was nobody ever available because my mom, she was gone all the time. She was on her business trips and whatnot. Like she was literally gone all the time. Um, my dad, it was a very estranged relationship. And so nobody was really there for me. And um, I didn't grow up having a constant figure in my life that was there emotionally and um, physically. And I didn't grow up with people who were emotionally sane, so to say. Like right now, it, the movement is, you know, show your emotions, live your emotions, feel your emotions. They're okay. But back then, uh, I think a lot of people can relate when I say, you know, my parents or your parents were emotionally 
just putting on band-aids putting on cover-ups like to, to to men we always say oh if you cry you're weak and to women we say oh if you go crazy quote unquote right you're too emotional and this is not good either so what the hell are we supposed to do and when i look back i learned all of these patterns and i learned that i had never had a constant love figure in my life so to say so that's why again this was my comfort zone and that's why again i chose it i love it so how did you when that was your comfort zone and that was your norm and then you end up with these emotionally unavailable guys. Did you have, did you journal? Did you meditate? How did you survive that four years of disappointment? <laughs> oh my God, I traveled. So <laughs> for me, it was mainly um, travel. It, that, that, cause it led me into different places. It led me to throw myself into um, a completely different world and get, getting to meet new people and all of that stuff. And also I was not available emotionally because I was always on my travel because I was always moving and physically not available. I was the same. I was a mirror to these guys. And emotionally also, I probably wasn't 100% available because I wasn't fully the way that I was before I met the man of my dreams. I was very, very, very happy with myself. I loved hanging out with myself. I loved my business, my, my clients, my friends, everything about my life. But back, back then, as I was traveling, I was still finding myself. So I wasn't grounded. I was moving. I was just, yeah. Spinning. Spinning. Not, not available. Not available at all. Yeah. <laughs> So let's, how did you transition from being unavailable and mirroring and getting these unavailable guys to becoming who you are today? I dated myself. So um, as cliche as it sounds, I dated myself. I took myself out. I was alone a lot by myself. I finally settled in one place, kind of, <laughs> as much as I can say that for myself. But I, I settled and I just became the person that I loved most basically um, meaning I loved my values I loved how I acted and interacted with people I loved my business I loved my clients I loved the life that I was building for myself um, I had fun and I was like literally when I was walking into a room and or when I was like you know um, with other people then people were seeing oh my god who's this girl like I had freaking five guys before I met my um, partner like I didn't have them but you know, I was kind of dating around and there was like guys flocking to me before that because I was so confident and strong and happy with myself and within myself. And everybody who meets me, my friends also, and, and the guys that I meet me, they always tell me you are so real and so true to yourself. And I think that was the key to my success as well as to manifesting my dream partner because I was true I knew what I wanted. I knew what I didn't want. And I made no secret of letting people know um, because there was one guy who was like, um, what did he say? Oh yeah, let um, meet me at the hotel for drinks and dance for the first date. And I was like, no, no, no. I want to be taken out. I want to actually meet somebody who is going to do that for me. Um, and I'm not meeting you at a hotel for the first date. No, 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 I'm not going to do that. So as mm -hmm. I sent out all the messages to guys like that, and then, there was a lot of guys where I said, mm, no, like, sorry, this is, you know, this is good. Maybe the sex was good. Maybe something else was good, but it's not it. Mm -hmm. So that is also what helped me. And I also stayed true to myself with that. I, I, agree. I was telling them. <laughs> I agree completely. And a new conversation I'm having right now is the women I see in healthy, happy relationships led with expectations and they saved their compassion for later. You know, they didn't think, oh, I need to save you. I need to help you. I can fix you. I can this, I can that, you know? And we get in trouble when I think about like, if you have a t-shirt on, expectations needs to be on the front of your t-shirt and compassion needs to be on the back of your t-shirt. But if compassion is on the front of your t-shirt, oh, I can save you, I can help you, I can, I'll be who you need me to be. And expectations are on the back of your t-shirt, you're going to end up in another toxic relationship or with a fixer upper. I love that analogy. I really love that. And I, I had the, in my first relationship, the first four years, it was also the same thing. I was like, I wanted to change them. I wanted to fix them. I wanted to save them. And now that I'm a coach and hypnotherapist, 
sometimes I still slip into that, but I catch myself and then I'm like, no, I'm not here to save you. I'm not here to fix you. I'm not here to help you because we are two separate people. And I want you to be happy with everything that you do. And I want that for myself too. And I need to like this relationship right now that I'm in that taught me the most that I need to be happy by myself. The happiness needs to come from within and from me. Like that was the most important thing. And as cliche as it sounds, but it's the truth. <laughs> Yeah. So how did you start to find that happiness in yourself? If there's someone who's really in dating despair, they are in, they're upset. They feel like I'll be single forever. Um, this dating process is miserable. I feel like I'm just searching around in the garbage, trying to find the king. Um, what would be your advice to them? Oh, um, there's a few things. So first of all, I want women to stop saying I hate men or men suck or all these generalizations, right? Because they don't, you just attract, you are responsible for attracting. And as, as hard as that pill is to swallow, you are re responsible for attracting shitty men. Because if you don't look at yourself, if you don't heal yourself, if you don't put your expectation on the front of your t-shirt, you are not going to meet the man that is going to hold up these expectations. And so um, that's, the, that's the first thing, like really stop saying that, stop believing that because you really need to believe that you eventually are going to meet your king. And maybe you start by um, what I always say to anybody that's like pretty much solves a lot of problems is you following your gut instinct, you following what you love doing because that way you can only attract good things because our guts and our subconscious mind, it always wants us to be happy. It wants us to thrive, not to only survive, but to really thrive. And so if you follow what you love, if you follow what, you, what your heart desires, then you will meet the same kind of people. And then you will attract men like that too, who also love what they do. Like my man, oh, he loves what he does. And I am so happy with that because I wouldn't want to meet anyone who is unsatisfied in his job in his career oh, that would not be for me <laughs> and then also when you realize you have not hung out or you are currently not hanging out with kings so to say but only princes or kings in the making you're also not going to meet your king it's not about you building that king but he should already be a king and rather you know you already a queen because you've healed yourself you've probably worked on yourself you've done a lot of stuff you have you have done self-healing, like, you know, a lot of things. And then these people here, like the, the princes or the kings to be, they may have not done all the stuff. So they may also slip into their toxic, um, toxic patterns. But if you also focus on yourself and then if you um, cut out all the kings in the making, if you just cut them out, if you realize, okay, this person is toxic, as soon as they're like, really toxic you're like okay it's done i'm not even gonna um entertain that anymore not even for sex you are sacred your energy is sacred the person who's going to enter your body if they have shitty energy that's going to translate onto you so um if you really meet a king that's already a king then um it's going to be great and everybody else you can just cut out uh, oh, that's awesome. So let's talk about, you said you had a hypnosis for manifesting your dream guy. Uh, do you want to lead me through that? Uh, no, so it was not really manifesting my dream guy. It was a hypnosis for um, working my patterns. So we're uh, finding out the patterns that I had. Yeah, from, from previous relationships. Um, but for manifesting my, my dream guy, I didn't really have a hypnosis um, because what, what was always... Uh, what I was always able to do was I was always able to manifest guys. I manifested my twin flame. I manifested a guy who manifested me in the same night. And he had the name of my spirit guide. That was insane. Like we told each other 10 minutes after meeting, we manifested each other. <laughs> and so I, like for me, it wasn't, um, there are some people who can manifest things in business, who can manifest things in money, who can manifest this in, uh, things in friends. But I was always really good at manifesting people. So for man to manifest people, I would like literally write a letter to the universe. I would be like, hey, um, hey, universe, can you please give me that today? Or can you please let me meet that person? <laughs> and uh, for my dream partner, actually, 
I made two lists. One list was with all the, um, um, the characteristics of his personality and also the traits of his, um, of his looks. And the other list was about how I want to feel in that relationship. And eventually when I met him, I would read him the list and he was like, oh, do you recognize me? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and he, there was only one thing that didn't, that wasn't true. It was two pages. And the one thing that wasn't true was that he wasn't vegan or vegetarian. But then I was like, ah, that's okay. <laughs> so I wanted someone whose mother had played piano. Of all the weird things that I was manifesting in my dream partner, uh, because I piano. I was a piano major. I play piano a lot, and I wanted someone who thought it was normal to have a piano in the house and to have someone playing piano. So I and my oh, husband, his mother, I think has two or three pianos in her house. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so how long did it take you between man? You know, making those lists, and I really like that you added how you want to feel in the relationship. I really like because uh, that's so important in a healthy partnership, um, feeling of safety, feeling of connection, feeling like partners, feeling like it's a give and take versus you always giving uh, an equal partnership. So how long did it take you between making those lists and finding him? Um, so what I want to say is also that, so not only did I make the list last, it was last year in July. So, um, yeah, it was last year in July where I made the list about the um, character traits and the looks. And then in, in December, I wrote the list about how I want to feel. And in February, I met him. And so it was about, what is it, seven months between that. But during those seven months, I really worked on loving myself. So it wasn't only the list, but the loving myself in my life. So actually learning how to how you wanted to feel in the relationship, creating those feelings for yourself. Mm -hmm. before. Yeah, I agree with that too. I agree with that too. Well, you did say you had a, uh, an exercise to lead us through. So is that discovering the patterns? Is that what we're doing today? No, we're going to, because that would take long and I, I, I would have to assist people. I would rather assist people with that because it can be very, sometimes it is a bit painful. But what we're going to do is we're going to do something fun. We're okay. going to, um, we're going, I'm not, well, should I say it? Should I not say it? You tell me. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we can always edit it out. <laughs> if we need okay, to. Cool. okay. We'll so we're, what we're going to do is I want to take you guys to um, like about a 15 minute meditation. And um, if you're driving, please do not do this while driving. <laughs> do this when you're sitting down in a comfortable place where you're going to be undisturbed for the next about 15 minutes or 10 minutes. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to meet your future self and your dream partner. I'm excited. I mean, I already okay. have mine. I'm still doing it. And I'll show him the recording and he'll laugh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let me know when you're, when I should start. Go for it. Okay, great. So I want you to. I want you guys to close your eyes right now. And I want you to start paying attention to your breathing. Start paying attention to how the air is flowing in and out of your body. And in a moment, you're going to take three deep breaths. One for your body, one for your mind and one for your spirit. So go ahead and take in the first deep breath for your body, breathe deeply into your body, into every single cell of your body, deeply into your body. And as you exhale, you're breathing out everything that is no longer serving your body. And on the next breath in, you breathe in deeply into your mind, into every single cell, into every single thought of your mind, breathing in deeply. And as you exhale, breathe out everything that is no longer serving your mind. And on the third breath in, I want you to breathe in deeply, deep into your soul, connecting with your spirit, connecting with your soul. And as you breathe out, breathe out everything that is no longer serving your soul and allow for your breath 
to return back to normal and keep breathing with ease and allow for yourself to relax deeper and deeper with every breath you take. And now I want you to imagine a beautiful light at the top of your head, which is going to come into your body in a moment and which is going to relax every single muscle of yours. Allow for that light to come in through your skull and allow for the light to relax all the muscles in your forehead, all the muscles around your eyes, making your eyelids feel really, really heavy. And allow for the light to relax your nose, your cheeks and your ears. And as the light is traveling down even further, allow for the light to relax your mouth, your jaw, your chin and even your tongue. And as you feel the light traveling down, you can relax your neck and your throat. And as the light is touching your shoulders, flowing into your shoulders, I want you to completely relax your shoulders, let everything fall off your shoulders and allow for the light to travel into your arms, into your hands and every single one of your fingers. And as the light is traveling down your chest, your stomach and your back, every single vertebrae, I want you to imagine that this light is relaxing all the muscles in your chest, your stomach and your back. And then this light is traveling down into your bottom and your thighs, relaxing all the muscles there. And as this light is traveling down even further into your knees and your calves, it will also relax the muscles around your knees and your calves. And finally, the light is traveling down into your feet and your toes, relaxing all the muscles in your feet and your toes. And when I snap my fingers, your intuition is going to tell you where you are the most relaxed. Three, two, one. And you will know where you are the most relaxed now, whatever is coming to your mind first. And from there, you're going to send another wave of relaxation into your body. And in a moment, I want you to imagine a beautiful staircase with 10 steps that is leading you down to your dream house in the future, whether that is one year from now, five years from now, or 10 years from now. The staircase has 10 steps leading down and in a moment I'm going to count down and as I count down and as you're going to go down the staircase, I want you to relax even more. 10, stand on top of the staircase and feel the material of the staircase against your feet. Going down to nine, allowing yourself to relax more and more. Eight, relaxing deeper and deeper and seven, deep down into relaxation. So that's six, your conscious mind is going into the background and five, your subconscious mind can come to the forefront and four, you feel as relaxed as three, you have never felt before. And two, this relaxation feels so wonderful and so peaceful that you, one, want to relax even more. And at zero, you are at your dream house. And your dream house, you can open the door to it now. So walk in, walk into your dream house, into your future dream house. Look around or future home, whatever that is. Look around maybe smell something, whatever the smells of this dream home are. Maybe you can hear something, maybe if it's by the ocean, you can hear the waves, maybe if it's by the lake, you can hear some birds. Look at the view that you have from your dream house. And feel how good and how at home and how peaceful it feels to be in your dream house. And then you go look for a table in your dream house. And by that table, I want you to sit down. 
sit down on this table. And in a moment, when I count from three to one, your future self is going to take a seat right across from you. Three, your future self is coming from afar. It's coming closer and closer and closer to your future self. You can see them, you can feel them, you can hear them better and better. And one, your future self is right there in front of you and zero, they're taking a seat at the table across from you. And now I want you just to look at them and check them out and feel their vibe, feel their energy. What are they doing? Are they laughing? Are they smiling? Are they feeling good? Are they feeling at peace? How are they feeling? I want you to ask them how they're feeling. Just ask, hey, how are you? And see what they answer. And then I want you to ask your future self, What can I let go of today that is no longer serving me in order to find or to manifest my dream partner? What can I let go of today? And see or feel or hear the answer from them. And trust the answer because your subconscious always knows. I'm going to give you a moment for that. What is it that I can let go of today so I can manifest my dream partner? And then now I want you to ask your future self, am I on the right path? Am I doing good? Or is there anything I can do more of? And again, I'm going to give you a few moments of time. And then now I want you to ask your future self, can you call my future dream partner here, please, to the table? Can we see him? And then they may say yes, they may say no, but I'm hoping they say yes. <laughs> and you can see your future dream partner come to the table now at the count from three to zero. Your dream partner from the future is approaching your future self right now at three and the two, they're coming closer and closer and closer. You can also feel them, hear them and see them. And one, they're sitting next to your future self at the table and zero. You can ask them a question. Maybe you can ask, how did I find you? Where did you come from? You can ask, what do you love about me the most? I'm going to give you a few moments for that. And now I want you to thank your dream partner for coming here and let them go. And you can listen to this recording as often as you want if you have another question for them. But for now, just stand up from the table and see your future self also standing up from that table. And imagine or see or feel your guys or yourselves walking towards each other. 
and imagine or feel or see how you're hugging each other, how you have the same pulse, the same heartbeats, and how they're melting into you. Your future self with all their wisdom and all their knowledge is melting into you because they are you already. You already have the knowledge and the wisdom that it takes to be your future self. Your future self already exists. You have already all the wisdom, all the knowledge, and all the answers that you need to call that dream partner into your life. And now take in a deep breath. And breathe out everything no longer serving you. And slowly come back into your body, into this time and space, into this room. Come back into your body, into this time and space, into this room and feel the energy returning back to your body. You can wiggle your toes or your fingers. And when I count from one to five, you're going to be wide awake and you can open your eyes. One, you are now back in your body. Two, the energy is now back in your body. Three, you can breathe in deeply. Four, you can release. And five, you can open your eyes being wide awake, wide awake, open your eyes, wide awake. That was so fun. Thank you so much. <laughs> My future self is like really old. And you know, I was imagining me and my husband just like around the table, just so like old. <laughs> exactly what I right now. Uh, so you asked the question, you know, what's your favorite thing about me? Or something, something like that. And I asked my husband that question nearly every day. I'll say, What's your favorite thing about me today? Oh. And it's a really fun game we play. Um, you know, because Sometimes it's, oh, I'm thankful you did a task around the house, or I'm thankful that you gave me a back massage, or I'm thankful that we had time together. You know, just something very light, because we've been together whew, nearly six, I don't know, five, six years. We've been married for nearly 30, so just trying to keep that romance alive and that fun alive. Uh, so you asked that question. I was like, oh, yes, I'm still asking him that when we're old. <laughs> Oh, I love that. That's so beautiful. Well, Jennifer, thank you so much for taking us on this journey. Where can people find more out about you? Um, so I am literally everywhere. <laughs> but um, people can connect with me really well on Instagram um, at Mind Your Subconscious. That is my Instagram handle. You can find me there on Facebook. You can find me on YouTube. You can find me on LinkedIn, either by my name or by my handle, which is again, mind your subconscious. I also have a podcast where I also talk about everything that ha handles the subconscious and yeah, that's where you can find me. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for helping us on our journey to becoming toxic person proof. <laughs> thank you for having me. <laughs>